Listen, sister, wait, 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 sister. Hey, let me get your preset right here. Go ahead. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58, and verse 1. Understand this, sister, right? We not, we not, we not, we know some Christian pastors, all right? Go ahead. Cry loud! What? Cry loud! The Lord want the children of... You see, you see, you see that? Yeah, you see that? That's what, that's what... Sister, 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 you see that? Sister, you see what you try to do? Why would you try to snack? That's not. I got, I got you, bro. And why would, why, why would you? Why would you're not? Now you're not displaying what you just said. You just did it. It's on camera, sis. Are you drunk? Uh, all right. So, so listen. Calm down. Can you calm down, dude? Let me see I'm gonna let that go. I'm calm. All right. Thank you. What you trying to do? You're trying to tell me how to teach the Bible. Hey, sis, you keep. <laughs> no, I'm at, but but it's the way you're doing it though, because I'm out here to work for the Lord, sis, and it's like you're trying to take over me in the midst of what I'm doing. What you want? What you want me to understand? This is what I want you to understand. Go ahead. Sister, sister, can I read the Bible? Can I read the Bible, sis? Are you okay? Are you filled with the Spirit? All right, so sister, no, no, hey, watch this. Hey, sister, do you have a husband? You're single? Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm fine. But this is all I want to say. Yeah, so listen at this, sis, real quick. Listen, 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 can you listen to the word? No, no, sister, don't worry about the camera. Can you listen to the word? Just listen to the word, sis. Go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Sis, just listen. Can you listen? Don't touch him. I just want to give you one scripture. How? I listen to you. Now you want the mic? Well, since we're here, I came here to ask the gentleman to not be disrespectful and call out individual disability. Okay. I walked past. Since you said that already. Exactly, and I'm saying it to make sure that that, that everyone. Yeah, that, no, 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 no. You, you are you not listen, the listen, listen, What you're not going to do not is take control of my hand. Take control. You, you've been taking control of my arm, my hand, my I'm wrist. You tried to take the mic. I mean, come on, sis. I just want you to relax, right? Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahabashai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahabashai. And um, pretty much, you know, you see a so-called black woman being out of order. And, um, you know, these these so-called women in general of the tribes, you know, I'm talking about the so-called Negro, Hispanic, Native American, Indian women. They're completely out of order and they don't respect their men. All right. Whether it be believing or non-believing. You know, they coming in the same spirit of feminism, you know, equality and the wisdom of this world, which is foolishness with the most high. And the most high is going to destroy a lot of you, you know, Israelite sisters and to you men. You know, you don't need a woman that's a believer. You know, don't don't waste your time trying to convert these so-called um, or not so-called. But yeah, the so-called black woman. All right. You, you wasting your damn time. Her mind is made up. She don't want to listen. You know, the, the scriptures tell you that this course with a fool is irksome in the Apocrypha in the Old Testament. So you, you're just going to warn yourself out even more. You're just going to stress yourself out. All right. You can deal with a non-believing woman. And over time, you know, she's going to adapt to your spirit. All right. The job of the Israelite woman, whether she knows she's an Israelite, you know, a believer or non-believing they still got the same job, which is to serve their men. That's how they proved themselves to Yahweh Bashem El Shai, by worshiping their man. Going back to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. That's the spirit and the mindset that these women need to be in. And I'm talking about the sea line of Jacob concerning our woman. All right. Whether they're believing or non believing, they got to come in the mindset of Genesis 3 and 16. Put off the ways of westernization and the wisdom of this world. You know what you think a man is or how he should treat you 
all right get in the mindset of what did the most high say according to the scriptures all right now commenting on that on um, video those dudes man that camp you know i'm not even gonna name them but you know they go off on the sabbath you know they teach that um the sabbath is every friday to saturday sundown all right but that's not what i want to focus on what i want to focus on is you know if you have a camp and you got a woman that's unruly like that just send her ass down the street why the like why the hell are you going to give this woman a mic you know you're, you're displaying uh, weakness all right these women they need to be rebuked and corrected and if they don't want to take heed to the messengers of yahweh bashim el shai then let them be destroyed this truth is only meant for the elect of the nation of israel stop wasting your time on women that don't fucking respect you all right so now let's just get into the scriptures this shouldn't be too long this is the book of um, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 6 in the NLT version. It says, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. All right. And, and what's what's holy? Knowing this truth, teaching this doctrine, spreading the correct gospel. Don't waste your time with somebody that's stupid. They just want to challenge you all fucking day. They ignore their ass. All right. Let them talk to themselves. Let them wander. You know, be mysterious to people. Just learn how to ignore people. You know, these people that's non-believers, they meant to stress you out. All right. They're they're meant to be unbelievers. That's their lot. And if you understand the scriptures, you understand that the God of Israel, through his only begotten son, is only dealing with the elect of the nation of Israel. The ones that's going to be able to comprehend or understand this truth. All right. Not all Israel, just because they say they are Israel, not all of them have the truth. Not every Hebrew Israelite camp is the same. You need to realize that the camp that you need to be watching is Great Millstone, all right, known as GMS. You know, watch my channel or look in my description box. You know, I got some channels you can subscribe to. Or if you want more channels, just ask on the comment board. Don't watch all these camps because it's going to lead to your confusion. You got some of these camps, they put women on the pedestal, they got women teaching, which is obviously against the scriptures. So why are they doing it? Because the Most High is not dealing with them, all right? You got a lot of so-called men that's in this truth that are queen of heaven worshipers. You know, they put women on the pedestal. They allow their woman to walk all over them. And then when you talk to these individuals, oh, you know how it is, brother, I'm just catching hell. No, your woman don't listen. She don't respect you. And you're, you're tolerating that, all right? I'm gonna read again, Matthew 7 and 6. So like I said, don't waste your time on these women. All right. The best thing we could do for these women is, you know, to teach them the truth. I'm talking about when you're on the streets, if they come up to the camp and if they can't receive it, then the truth is not meant for them. All right. But as far as relationships, your woman don't need to know what you do. And these women don't have to be in the truth. All right. But if they so if they so happen to find out what you about, you know, as an Israelite man, you know, going out on Saturdays or whatever day you go out now. All right, then that, that's fine. But just don't, just don't pour all your blood, sweat and tears thinking that she's going to be like Sarah, you know, calling you Lord or master or just being a perfect woman. Just acknowledge that these women, they're in the flesh, like how we in the flesh. And, you know, you can work with them as long as, you know, um, they do like the, the basic things. You know, they, they, they do things for you according to the scriptures without crossing the line or overstepping Pacific boundaries that you can deal with them, all right? Because you don't want to be over-righteous either. You don't want to be a lion in your own house. This is Matthew 76. It says, don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. So the nation of Israel obviously is the chosen sea line that the Most High is dealing with. You can read about that in Isaiah, I believe it's 45 and 4, all right? Israel is the chosen nation of the heavenly father but you need to realize within the chosen nation there's an elect and the elect is the ones that's going to receive salvation according to the scriptures all right all israel is not going to be saved all israel was saved you know once upon a time being delivered out of egypt and they were unholy all right they were acting like dogs you know they were idol worshiping they was talking shit they was doubting the most high and back then the miracles was right in front of us. You didn't even need to have faith. The Most High was displaying miracles right before our eyes. And you still had Israelites that was ungrateful. 
That's why the seed line of Jacob, until Yahweh shall come back, is under the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Why? Because they want to follow the way of the heathen. After all these things, these miraculous things that Yahweh have done for us, Israel still forsaken the Most High and want to serve, you know, statues and, and wood and stone that can't do nothing for them, that doesn't benefit them. So they deserve to be put to death, and they will be put to death. All right? It says, don't throw your pearls. The pearls is what? This truth. Not every clam got a, a pearl in it. All right? But the ones that have the pearl in it, they're, they're precious to be able to produce that. Right? So the pearls is this truth, this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we have through Yahabushah's blood and sacrifice. It says to pigs. So two-thirds of the nation of Israel, you, you looked at as a pig, as a beast. All right? It says they will... And what do you do with an a unruly beast? You know, that's, that's drooling at the mouth. It got rabies. What do you do with something like that? You, you kill that thing. You put it to death. It says they will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. And that's what's going on. See, people have Bibles in their house, but everybody doesn't have the Holy Spirit to properly break down the Bible through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh. All right. So you got these Christians, they lean upon their own understanding and they think that they got the truth. And these women that have Bibles in their house, they're extremely masculine. All right. And a lot of us know it because some of these masculine westernized women, these monsters, some of them were our grandmothers, some of them were our mothers. Right. Some of them was even ex-girlfriends, possibly, or ex-wives. Right. So just avoid them. You know, we had enough of that, man. It's time to move on. So now let's go here. This is on um, Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. It says, what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for? So our people, they're looking for the truth, but only the elect, as it's going to say here. It says, but the election have obtained it because this truth was only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. The elect is not going to doubt Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. They're going to pray. They're going to have faith. They call upon the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and teach and believe according to what's written and not lean upon their own understanding. All right. They're not going to be coin to heaven worshipers. They're not going to allow a woman to just walk all over them and, and use them. Right. It says. But the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. So two thirds of the nation of Israel, pursuant to Zechariah 13 and 8, they will be destroyed for their unbelief. Why? Because they don't have the gift of faith. It wasn't meant for them to believe because all of our actions is predestinated. There's no such thing as free will. So when you come across an individual that doesn't listen, you know, something is a stumbling block in the scriptures, then that's the most high sifting them. All right. That's the most high showing you that you don't need to waste your time on this individual, right? Just just send their ass down the block. It's not for them. You know, as a man, you don't want to waste your time dealing with people that don't listen. It says, verse 8, according as it is written, the Most High have given them, two-thirds of the nation of Israel, unbelieving Israelites, the spirit of slumber. They're asleep. You got all these prophecies coming to pass, you know, through, the, through um, current events, Right? And they still can't see. You got this lunar eclipse coming up, and that's that's highly spiritual. You know, these different signs in the heavens, that means that Yahweh Shah is coming back. But two-thirds unbelieving Israelites, they, they can't see that. So they're in a deep slumber. They're asleep, right? It says eyes that they should not see. So they, they can't see. They can't link up the current events with the Bible prophecies to understand the time period they're living in, all right? Even though something is clear and... It doesn't require any extreme understanding. When you read specific verses or laws, it's still a stumbling block unto them. Why? Because it's their lot not to believe, right? They believe in the ways and the philosophies of this world. They believe in the man-made religion breakdowns of the scriptures over what the prophets are saying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahshua. Therefore, they got to be put down. It says, eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear unto this day. So even from the beginning, it was only meant for the elect of the nation of Israel to obtain this truth. All right. And um, that's pretty much it with that. Now, let's keep going. NLT again. This is um, first, first Timothy chapter two and verse. Let's see. Okay, 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse, let me see, 
I'll start at 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9 in the NLT version. It says, and I want women to be modest in their appearance. So a lot of these women, they're not modest in their appearance. They're showing their cleavage. They got their breasts out. They're extremely masculine. They want to over talk and challenge men. And, and to them, that's like a sport. You know, that's that's like culture for them. Oh, let me let me let me, um, you know, get underneath his skin. Let me ruffle his feathers. You know, then the guy tell you to shut the fuck up and get in order. Then now it's a problem. Now she's ready to fight. Right. See, a lot of them, they don't know how to listen. So what, what can you do with that? You're going to keep going back and forth with a woman that don't want to listen. And then after a while, she's going to want to get physical. No, just just ignore it, man. It ain't worth it. It says First Timothy 2 and 9. And I want women to be modest in their appearance. Yeah, be modest. You know, the way you dress to the best of your ability. Stop just being a whore. That's what it come down to. All right. The more successful and masculine a woman is, that's going to lead to her being a whore. All right. It says they should wear decent and appropriate clothing. And that's not going on in society. All right, you got a young ass woman that's 13, 14, even younger than that, just dressing like a horse. All right. It says they should wear decent and appropriate clothing and not draw attention to themselves by the way they fix their hair. And look at how these women, look at their hair. They got neon colored hair. This is ridiculous. They got weaves. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, man. They're just whores. And that goes back to Amos 7 and 17. That wife shall be a harlot in the city. See, this society in America is the result of the law, statutes, and commandments not being implemented. That's why there's no fear of Yahweh or Yahweh Shai or his prophets in the land. Because you got the so-called white man, the, the slanderous devil that's in rulership, the Edomites. Right? It says, yep, by the way they fix their hair or by wearing gold or pearls or expensive clothes. Which, you know, ain't nothing wrong with that, but it's the pride that come with that, though. Right. It says for women who claim to be devoted to the most high should make themselves attractive by the good things they do. Yeah. You know, contributing to the church, not by teaching. All right. But, you know, you help the church out. I remember um, when I first joined the camp on 34th and 7, you had women. They would, um, you know, make like the apostles garments. You know, they would bring um, like little gifts and stuff like that. You know, it wasn't like over the top. They would bring like waters and stuff like that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, paying tights, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But the Most High doesn't require you to teach, though. You need to understand that. There's no example of that in the scriptures. All right? It says, um, going down, it says, women should learn quietly and submissively. And these women are not submissive. They don't know how to be quiet. You know, the scriptures tell you that a, a, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and know of nothing. You know, these women, they always have an opinion. They always want to challenge your authority. You know, the Most High said that what? In Genesis 3 and 16, that your husband is supposed to rule over you. You're not supposed to be over talking your husband, being a, a nuisance in public, being embarrassing, being loud, hitting your husband. Got people filming. You know, they, they, they just out of order, man. They got to be put down. There's nothing you could do with them. Then some of these men are so weak. You know, here you are. You'll come across a guy that know he's an Israelite, but then his woman, she's the one that's speaking. She she talking at the top of her lungs, you know, with the microphone and, and loudspeaker. He he's reading the precept for her. Like, what kind of shit is this, man? The most high is tired of looking he's not even looking at the planet Earth. All right? It tells you that that his eyes they can't behold iniquity. The most high is fed up, Yahweh is fed up, and his his men is fed up. I'm going to read it again now. 1 Timothy 2 and 11 in the NLT. Women should learn quietly and submissively. All right? You have to be submissive to your husband. It says, and quiet. It says, I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. So women shouldn't have authority over their men. But see, in this society, this system is really geared to oppress the Israelite man of all the tribes. All right? So now these women... Now they take a, a leadership role so that they can get the benefits and status of this society that's meant to destroy the Israelite man, the so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American Indian man. All right? So it says, um, let them listen quietly. So you come up to the camp, just listen quietly. You know, after the speaker finished talking, then you could politely ask a question if the speaker asks you if you have a question. 
All right. You know, no, no one is your place to say something. No one is your place to be quiet. But these women, they always want to just keep on talking, keep on talking. It says, for the Most High made Adam first, and afterward he made Eve. So when you read in the scriptures, in um, Genesis, the first chapter, it tell you that a bunch of men and a bunch of women was created at, um, you know, on the fifth day, if I'm not mistaken. All right. But the man was created first. That's the point. It says, and afterward he made Eve. Right. It says, and it was not Adam who was deceived by Satan. Yeah, it wasn't Adam that was deceived by Satan. The woman was deceived and sin was the result. And it tells you in Ecclesiasticus and the Apocrypha, it tells you that a woman came to the beginning of sin. And because of what Eve did, we all died because of this. All right. So if you really want to be real technical with this thing, you know, it's the woman's fault. All right. But let's go down here because she went by high Adam's back and was learning from the serpent, which the serpent was a man. All right. One of the one of the, um, the sons of the wicked. Right. And he deceived her, but she went behind Adam's back to learn those philosophies. All right. Anyways, it says, but woman will be saved through childbearing. So that's where a woman are going to receive salvation. If well, I was going to say it, it's, it's my favorite part. But woman will be saved through childbearing, assuming they continue to live in faith, love and holiness. But I got to read this in the KJV because they uses the word if and I got to really highlight that for you. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2 and um, verse 15. So this is the KJV version. This is 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. So that's why these women are being delivered so that we can repopulate the earth. All right. The same similar account happened with Noah and his three sons and their wives. All right. Why were they saved? To be able to repopulate the earth. All those people that drowned, they had to come back to one of Noah's sons. All right. So back in first Timothy, chapter two, and verse 15, it says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. If and that's a big if, because the woman that you come into the truth with, that might not be the same woman you end up on the chariots with. You know, it says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if. That's a big if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. All right. So just like we got to endure into the end, they got to endure into the end, but they got to serve and please their men. That's it. That's what they have to do. All right. This is on first Peter chapter three. And I'm going to start at um, verse five. First Peter chapter three and five. It says for after this manner in the old time, meaning in the ancient world right in the past generations the holy woman also who trusted in the most high adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husband so this is the example you women that come into the truth you're supposed to be in subjection submissive unto your own husband all right not nagging him not pissing him off not being a thorn inside right it says even as sarah obeyed abraham calling him lord and these women they're not going to call you lord all right they're not going to do that Maybe some will, but for the most part, they, they're they not going to do that. It says, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. It says, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge. So you got to dwell with these women according to knowledge. All right. Understand that what? Well, it's going to say it. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. So something that's weak, you know, you got to lead it correctly. You know, you got to guide it. In the right path as long as it's um submissive and she's capable of listening and taking orders you know she listened more than she speaks it says and as being ears together of grace of life that your prayers be not hindered and um that's pretty much it with that now i'm gonna end it with this this is um first corinthians chapter seven i'm gonna start at um let me see First Corinthians chapter seven and I'll start at ten. It says, And unto the married I command ye not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. Yeah, so Paul he was implementing the law. 
All right. He taught after the ordinances of the law. If he was given spiritual advice, it was based off of the law, statutes and commandments. All right. Paul is a man of the most high and Yahweh. It says, but the Lord let not the wife depart from her husband. All right. Because you got a lot of women in this westernized society and worldwide. You know, they get divorces, you know, from their um, husbands. You know, they'll walk out of the relationship. You know, they'll end things with a text message. Right. That's that's wicked. Because as soon as they go and sleep with another man, that's adultery. All right. And the Most High is going to destroy these women that have done that to brothers. That's in this truth. It says, let not the wife depart from her husband because that's adultery. All right. And in the ancient world, they couldn't do that. Pursuant to Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter and the first couple of verses, it, it goes into a bill of divorce. All right. It says, but and if she depart. Now, let's say a woman, she leaves you. Right. Let her remain unmarried because the first man that she has sex with or does any sexual relations with, that's adultery. It says, um, or be reconciled to a husband, meaning she may leave you, but then as long as she didn't sleep with another man, she could come back to her husband and they could pretty much remarry. All right. They could get back together. It says, and let not the husband put away his wife. Yeah, don't don't put her away. As long as what? She's pleased to dwell with you as it's going to go into the next verse. All right. If she's doing the right thing, there's no point or reason why you need to leave her alone. All right. You got to remain with her until the end. Now, she's unruly and she don't listen. That's a different story. But if you put her away and she's a good woman, then you're going to cause her to commit adultery. It says, but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not. So now this is a completely different example all right this is dealing with an unbeliever woman she wasn't she doesn't um, know about the truth she doesn't know the correct doctrine right it says but to the rest yep but to the rest speak i not the lord if any brother have a wife that believeth not and she be pleased to dwell with him let him not put her away and the woman which have a husband that believe not now this is another example right this is dealing with a woman that knows the truth and the man that she's currently married to, he doesn't believe, right? It says, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him, all right? So if he's, he's doing everything he's supposed to do as a man, all right, there's you woman, just because you know the truth, you can't leave your husband just to go be with a man that's in the truth, all right? That's still adultery. It says... For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. Why? Because that wife would then teach him the truth. If he loves her, he gonna want, he's going to want to know what she's about. And as long as he's an Israelite man, he's going to learn the truth, right? And he's going to be sanctified through Yahweh Bashem El Shai, using that woman to tell him the truth, right? It says, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. It says, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, but the Most High have called us to peace. So, I mean, that's pretty much it with that. So, you know, Lord willing, you was edified by the lesson. Shalom.